Please look at the people here on stage as change makers, as people who really can provide impulses and a lot of good ideas tonight. And that's the way we should maybe start into that debate. Uh, and coming back to this, uh, to everyone being an expert, when I got the invitation to moderate this session, I was a little bit helpless, even though I really felt the challenge to do it, but I thought, oh my God, the scope is so broad. We are talking about making the world a better place. How can we ever do that? And we only have one and a half hours for that. So, um, I'm really curious to hear, first of all, maybe from Scott, because now we are we have gathered here to support the Baumhaus project. And um, I, I would be really interested to hear um, apart from all the issues that are around when we talk about making the world a better place, what is the most pressing topic for you? What, what do you see as really something that, that we need to approach right now? I think the most important goal that we have before us is uh, related to this. We know that all of the, the constructs that are out there, the economic constructs, the legal constructs of our culture, they don't work, they're broken. Capitalism is meant to, for instance, it's meant to manage imbalance, not meant to create balance. And what we need to do is we need to start to, to work on systems ideas that create balance. That's what we're all looking for. We're all looking for some sort of satisfaction. In order to create balance, Right? and change any of these bigger systems, these bigger, you know, uh, like I said, like capitalism and, and law and various different cultural things and addressing religion, we need to understand who we are. It's about developing social sustainability. That means how do we learn to treat ourselves and each other well? That's the main thing I think. Look, I have a box right now. This thing was a thing that had been, that could give free energy. And we could all walk away with it for 10 euros a night. We could go home and plug it. We'd never pay another electric bill again. And everybody has something in the world, but we can still treat each other like shit. So what we really need to do is focus on social sustainability. I think the key to that is understanding who we are. What is it that we what is it that we desire? What are, what are we after? What are our basic functional human needs that we're out there trying to fulfill? And I believe that if we actually focused on that as an objective, as a goal, even economically, like if we said the goal now, you make money by creating a better human situation somewhere in the world, everybody would be everybody would have a job because it's a huge job to fulfill, right? So I think the basis is let's let's try to figure out, you know, I'd like to figure out what you guys feel about social sustainability. It's really, really important. We talk about environmental aesthetics, but it's about social. So I'd like to hear your take on that, on the panel. Maybe I just can add one. I mean, for me, the most, uh, the biggest impact on social sustainability would be, and this is the other field I'm quite active in, is the basic income grant. Because I think then we can very much think about if we have that base for everybody, and of course it also includes the uh, change economy, it also uh, includes subsidi subsidiary, Subsistence. Subsistence, subsistence, subsistence uh, economy, then in global economy, then we can uh, we have a total different platform to think about sustainability. Because I think so, I have a, a kind of dreiklang or a dreisatz. Sustainability needs deceleration, needs basic income. So then we could start to think, uh, I mean, of course we will not have once a day a basic income and then we can start, but I think the, the fight for a better life should really include the fight for the basic income crime. That's very interesting. Um, also, as you all know, our cities are growing. They're, um, and we need to find a way to have a good way 
of life in the inner city. We all live in Berlin for a good reason. Berlin is a really livable, great city where you have a fantastic urbanity happening throughout most of the city. There are a sort of mix of use, there's a hybrid use in, in the buildings. That means the ground floor areas are, are lived in, they're, um, they're open, the whole city is open, there is rarely a fence that you run up to. It's not segregated in any way. And these are the kind of, of well, in, not maybe in any way, but anyway, this is, there's, a, there's a vibrancy in the city. And more than that, it's also about a question of how do you cr create environments throughout the city where people feel at home, where they don't feel like they live in the, in the middle of an, an, an anonymous place, where they feel like when they walk down the street, they know people, they're, they're at home. There are certain areas of the city that are good at that, certain others that are not, but what, what's, how do we create that, not only in certain places, but ever, overall, and what other kind of mechanisms need to be put into place in the city so that that, that kind of open urbanity is, is um, created and is livable, not only for few, a few, but for everyone. Um, I think that's the kind of, um, architectural city planning aspect that needs to be addressed in terms of the you know, social the social planning for the city. Okay, if uh, I might answer the question too, I mean, I, I'd love to contribute an issue that is uh, of um, great importance to me, and that is education. Because um, if I look back in my life, I really had, I had the luck to have really good teachers around me and everything I am today, everything I have today is based on these teachers. And I feel that we, we really should think about new ways of, of how, how can we provide access to knowledge in a way that everyone is able to learn things, is able to really um, to grasp topics, even though it's, it's not within their reach, how we can ensure learning environments that make people autonomous in this world and that make them, you know, using the city, using media, making their own money in a self-determined way. This is for me really the biggest question. And if I would have a budget and a, and a task, a mission, then I would probably start with that. I'm not a social scientist, I'm actually, another, I'm another kind of scientist in a certain sense. And when you said that uh, beauty was not aesthetics per se, that there were other factors, if anything taught, I learned in the whole psychedelic approach is a holistic reality, a global sense of immediacy, that one thought with one's feet, one's skin, with one's breath, with one's negative side, it's one's asexual side, one's sexual energy, all of that all came together. And that is the process of thinking. I agree that you have to have a society where once we have what we already have, which is the technological capacity existing to provide everyone with a basic income. That is a social decision. There is no shortage of anything in this world. There's simply a shortage of the willingness to distribute it within some range that people can live. Then what? Then what? I mean, right now, I think one of the biggest problems I experience is not so much a deficit of material potential, but a, a deficit of feeling, of being able to feel alive. I don't mean, you know, loving people is only one part of it but being able to feel alive, being able to appreciate the food they eat, still having a sense of taste, it's not being drowned by salt and fat and sugar, and, you know, it's, it's a natural mistake. Having a feeling toward what it's like to raise a child, or to be old, or to grow old and be happy, is something that we have to deal with in meaningfulness and a quotidian on a daily basis for human beings. And how do we, how do we bring that into the world? That is what I like to see, because the material problem 
at this point is not a material problem. It is a problem of attitude, and it's a problem of realizing that human beings on all levels deserve to feel alive. And so how to add something that it was not said in before. Um, before we started that round, I thought what links up the persons who are on that, that panel here. And I try to say something about that because um, Adrienne uh, spoke about, about others, uh, about aesthetics aesthetics and sustainability. You talked about uh, the job of an architect. You spoke about psychedelic arts and about love. And I spoke about the global overshoot and ecologic footprint and stuff like that. And um, as someone who comes from the natural sciences, we know since more than 100 years, but it's still not uh, arrived in our education and our knowledge systems, uh, is that our, our world, our life is not based on matter, of material. Unser Leben ist nicht auf Materie aufgebaut. The idea of, of uh, a mechanistic world, of uh, um, a deterministic world, where we are more or less uh, the servants of um, God-given or evolutionary-given setting of, of, um, of, of matter, of, of specimen, of, of landscapes, is a complete uh, wrong approach of, on, on, on our planet. And um, aesthetics, as I understand it, and please correct me if, if I use, in, especially in English, the wrong, wrong words, Adrian, aesthetics are somehow, from my point of view, uh, the forms how we deal with the aspects of, of creation of life and recreation of life. It's something, it's like the aesthetics are following, from my perspective, um, uh, a kind of ethics of life. Albert Schweitzer uh, said, uh, 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 one time, uh, um, I'm life amid of I'm life that wants to live amid of life that wants to live. Ich bin Leben inmitten von Leben. Ich bin Leben, das Leben will inmitten von Leben, das Leben will. Uh, he said that by the way while he was uh, uh, paddling with a canoe in between of hippotamus uh, of Neufer, uh, and he was quite afraid of that. And um, and building a town is something like uh, creating a, a setting of, of materialistic uh, forms that shall empower our ability of empower ourselves. Um, ich sage das mal in Deutsch. Um, aus meiner Sicht ist die, die Schaffung, die Kreation einer Stadt, einer Baustruktur, um, dient dazu, sozusagen im immateriellen Prozess des Menschen Raum zu verschaffen, sich selbst zu ermächtigen. Also einen Ermächtigungsraum zu schaffen, der Selbstermächtigung ermöglicht. And um, when you talk about your Baumhaus project, I have the feeling uh, that underlying is a concept of, of, of a co-evolution. Because the, the old Darwinistic principle of everyone against the others is, uh, in fact, in, in the natural sciences, in, in the modern natural sciences, uh, not, not state of the art anymore. Um, we, we, we perceive a, a co-evolution process, a, a cooperative process of evolution and permanent um, uh, per, per, performating our reality. Um, in Germany, we have the word um, Wirklichkeit. Uh, Wirklichkeit, you don't have that word in English, by the way. Wirklichkeit uh, uh, is a word that was um, uh, founded uh, by an, um, a German uh, uh, mystiker, how do you say in English, mysticism? A, a, a mystic, um, Meister Eckhart. Because um, he said, okay, we have a, a realität, a reality. And, and that word comes uh, from realitas. 
in, in Latin. And realitas is based on, on the term race, das thing, race, the thing. So it's a world uh, set together out of things, things material yeah. aspects. And he said uh, that doesn't match <coughs> with what is life. And uh, he took another uh, Latin word, actualitas, and um, translated it into, into that time completely new word uh, that is uh, a Wirklichkeit, eine Welt, die wirkt. Wirklichkeit is, it's, uh, 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 wirken is like, uh, uh, to, to, like a world set together from events, from happenings. Yeah? So, and if we follow that concept uh, of life, we, we understand that everything what we create and every political setting that we create and every material setting that we create and every ecological footprint that we create um, is only developed by, by social settings and cultural meanings, cultural symbols that we culturalize and socialize over many, many years. And, um, uh, and empathy, you said love, beauty, and I understand you. How you describe beauty somehow with something that follows the basic principles of life. And if I understand you, Adrian, I have the feeling that if you talk about aesthetics, and that's a question, and maybe you can go on that, uh, that is something that appeals on let us develop the forms to live together in a way that follows the basic function of living. And uh, you mentioned balance. Balance in living, in, 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 in life, balancing is something completely different than most of us learned in school. Uh, in school we learned balance uh, is, is like uh, the, the vage in English, how to say, uh, the, 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 the scale, the balance, the balance, you can also say. In life we have something, I have an example for that, that I learned from a physis uh, physicist uh, called uh, Hans-Peter Dürr, quantum physicist, and he always said, okay, Balance is, is a special ability of life. If, if you walk, you fall from one instability into the other. Yeah? So, and the ability of balancing these instabilities from the right le leg to the left leg, something that we can call dynamic balance. And the uh, dynamic, uh, the ability to balance something in a dynamic way is something that is only possible in life with a big diversity of varieties, how to deal with life. Also, die Fähigkeit zur dynamischen Stabilisierung des Lebens ist eine, die durch die Unterschiedlichkeit von Lebendigkeit äh, äh, zustande kommt. Und äh, in einer mechanistischen Welt und in dem mechanistischen Weltgebäude und politischen Gebäude und ökonomischen Gebäude, das wir sozusagen als festgelegten Status quo erlernt haben, haben wir sehr oft verlernt, miteinander in einen Prozess of Co-Acting zu gehen. Das, äh, also ein, ein gemeinsames sich in die Welt hinein performen. And I think it's urgently the time to remind, to remember that uh, since 3.8 billion years of life, life was always following a co-evolution, a co-acting process. And uh, we have to come back to the co-acting. And for that we have to become free. And freedom is something that is born only in, in, in the community and not in the individual. In the individual freedom is a result of the freedom that is developed as, as, as a common of the, the community. And uh, with that, we can, be, we can may, maybe that is something that needs to be bundled into processes for sustainable life. You know, you said something that was really interesting about 15 minutes ago. <laughs> <laughs> and it was this. You said it's about not a revolution, but it's about an evolution, right? And it's, this is just the beginning of it, because what we can do is we have the ability to address individual problems in our own lives, in our own neighborhoods with each other and focus on, you know, having a good time solving them. So, I mean, with, and, and in that spirit, what I'd like to do is like put a mic out here and have you guys Give us, tell, tell us a, a situation or a problem you, that you are a scenario that you think is unsolvable or, or challenge these guys. You know, let's really bounce this thing around. And if we can get kind of snap, we've got three mics here. Let's 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 get into it. Yeah, take all of the mics.
Wait a minute. But I have a question to Adrienne. That's why you can smoke it. I think it's somewhat as bad as painful. Yeah, maybe there's also someone in the audience who would like to. I'd like to just say something about what you said about what you said before. And he talks about capitalism being managing imbalance. What you said was very important because it recognizes that imbalance is a natural part of the human condition. Conditions are always changing. Conditions are always changing. Imbalance is what we are. We are not in balance. Never were, never will be. Even nature is not in balance. You have seasons. It gets warm. It gets cold. You have to manage these different objective conditions. Sometimes there's drought, like sometimes there's too much rain, there's floods. Always being flexible, always having to be flexible. Athletes live on the flexibility. Scientists live on the flexibility to change their ideas about how things work. We have all kinds of paradigms in science that have gone flat earth to round earth, you know, from Newtonian universes to quantum universes. This is, is an imbalance, which is natural. How do we create a society where there's enough flexibility for people to live within the imbalances of their moods, their emotions, their monthly cycles, whatever, ever, ever, and all those things. You know, I, I, I fear most of all defining utopia, defining paradise, and then saying everyone has to live within that agreed paradigm without any changes. And that, that, that frightens the hell out of me. I'm, I'm really interested if I, if I hear to all these um, contributions because we are really talking um, meta levels now and we've had all these different concepts and approaches which everyone is really interesting in its, in its own right but still I'm asking myself what are the really the concrete methodologies what are the baby steps to be taken to, to really to get somewhere at all and especially since we are talking about a very <laughs> About a very concrete initiative, the Baumhaus tonight. I'm, I'm really wondering, and also I, I love to hear some um, input from the audience. What is it actually that we can, that we know already in terms of methods of um, facilitation, tools, etc., to bring a dialogue about, bring people together, to talk about urban spaces that are sustainable. We talk about co-evolution, aesthetics, etc. What do we have and what do we have to develop? I think Berlin is a perfect place for a laboratory. We are definitely a post-industrial city. There is not a, an industry we have to fight against or we hope that it will come. It's definitely post-industrial. Post we have also a very uh, big and good fundament of creative people. We also have developed, I think, in Berlin. I always ask myself, why do we have so many artists? And why can you go out, step out of every profession, of every work you do, except of being an artist? And I think uh, the secret is, that being an artist is the most decent, the most dignified word, way to be poor in that city. Because nobody bothers you if you say, oh, I'm working on a project. I'm doing an application. So being an artist of life is maybe the, the next step we can, should go in Berlin. And I saw you shaking very heavily the the head when you said it's a very open city. Of course we have, we, we see it's a big, big transition in Berlin going on. Push and the head. And uh, it's not that uh, liquid and open uh, to everybody anymore. And we are much more defined than we used to be, which was always the charm of Berlin. But now I think, so, which is also a, a good idea for a laboratory woman, is dealing between the global and the local. And I like very much the word global, because it does not deny the global, the global context. And 
but and acts local. And I think Reading is a fantastic place because it's totally it is the in between us, this uh, this neighborhood, and there is a lot of social problems we have in all kinds. And I hope that the Bauhaus will be a place in many different aspects, not only being the place where people from the neighborhood can come. It's also about exchanging knowledge and uh, needs. So I hope that the Tausch economy, the exchange economy, can start a bit in your place. And it's also so again, if you ask me what is the statics, I think the, the terrible era we are all living in, or we have to suffer of, is that sustainability is a techno technological idea. No, it is not. It's about combining the different aspects of life. And this is basically what aesthetics means. So that you don't exclude your senses, your perception, your observation, your capacity of combining and following an idea of technology and the new, the new thing, but that you again restart, and I think you have to learn that. Because I don't agree that we are all balanced. I think the economy and uh, the situation we are living in put us in a quite destabilized situation which is unbalanced. And if you ask a lot of people, they have existential fear. And existential fear is, to my uh, conviction, the biggest enemy of all creativity. So if you want to use our, and again, you need all your senses to be creative, it's not the privilege of the artists or of a creative industry class, whatever, then you have also to face the fear which is opposing it. And this makes us imbalanced or unbalanced. Well, the word psychedelic is an interesting word because it means consciousness expansion. Literally, to expand consciousness. And I think that's what you're saying is that what we need is consciousness expansion. I, I for one, am not, you know, I, I think it's true what you said, you know, dignity. One can be poor and have dignity, and that's an important thing. I have never felt poor. There's times in my life I had less money than anyone, most of it. And yet I never really felt poor because everything had a wealth to it. And that's consciousness expansion. And, and, and that, to me, what the whole psychedelic movement, aside from the use of LSD or anything, was about was a statement of being able to be have a kind of awareness which transcends the material situation and transcends the attitude of people in society who say, you're successful, you have this. If you don't have this, you're not. And the existential fear of not having, for example, you know, to have a guaranteed income is to remove one of the existential fears of having Just nothing to eat, creativity. nowhere to live. And creativity comes from a consciousness expansion. And I also have to say about people in the artistic community, I don't think all people who call themselves artists are sometimes that conscious. 